Yeah, this is another generator we've got. I had this one for a couple of years now. Uh, we used to work fine, but for some reason it started over vaulting. And I think it's because the governor on the engine has stopped working. I did some tests on it um, by pulling the engine, the the, uh, the governor shaft off. Uh, easy to show you. Ugh. That thing there, just here. Uh, yeah, there. Uh, and it's got no resistance on it whatsoever, no matter how high or low you rev the engine. So I'm guessing that there is, the, the governor's decided to break off somewhere inside the engine. So that's my job today, take the engine apart. I'm going to knacker all the seals up on it, I know, but... Yeah, if it breaks, I'll just turn it into the steam engine I was going to build. <laughs> what, what, what the hell? And I'll have a nice generator that I can use to run something with, we'll see. Alright guys, keep watching. Well, upon draining the oil out, I found this. Come on, focus. Ah, focus, why you know? There we go. That doesn't look too good, does it? Oh, metal fragment. It's on the oil plug. Good idea they made it magnetic. Oh dear. I hope they aren't fragments of a... Uh, of engine governor. And that's what it's supposed to look like. Lots of metal fragments. Oh, I've got the generator off, sort of. That was the bearing I had to replace. Still works nice and well. That was the one that failed it and that was causing the whole uh, thing to lock up. That's why I brought the thing for four quid. <laughs> I just got to figure out how you get this off now without damaging anything. I'm guessing I undo that bolt there. Hopefully the whole thing will slide off. With a bit of persuasion. We'll see. Alright guys. Um, yeah, a bit of a tight spot here with this one. Um, no way of pulling the actual armature off the uh, the motor, off the engine, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to have to do something. I had a look, quick quick uh, look online to see if there was some special tool you had to use. But uh, apparently not, and there's a guy on YouTube who's done it. Thank you very much there, Donny, uh, Donnyboy73, uh, for giving me your little help on uh, on how to get this off. And that is to put a thread in that there. Use a bolt which I've already got somewhere. I've lost already. <laughs> I'll get another one. Uh, and then you put another bolt with the head sawn off. Uh, make sure it's long. Slightly bigger than what the thread is to that because that actually slides down into there. There is a washer that goes on that. That slides down into there and screws on. And you use that uh, to hopefully push. Uh, push push it off with So we'll see how it goes first of all I've got to make the thread now, I haven't got any proper oil for doing that so I just use some engine oil from out of the crankcase of this uh, of this engine We'll see if how, how it works All right guys, that's all well and good my thread is cut and my bolt screws in there nicely it Does but the moment it's not for some reason. So always when you pick the camera up, isn't it? Oh, there you go. It's going in there. So that threads in to about that hot, that that far down. It's the uh, longest I could do uh, thread-wise. Hopefully that's enough to get the thing off. Now I've put a mark on here as to what size I need. Come on, autofocus. There's a mark there, that mark there, that silver one. That's how far it comes up to, so I need about here. Quite a bit more, about there. Uh, so I've got to try and find something that is that long. Wish me luck. And she's off! Bit of a hard job to do, actually. Quite an impressive, uh, impressive amount of force it took to get that off. But it's off all the same. I'm quite happy now. 
Now then, four bolts to hold that plate on, and then these outer bolts here. I can guarantee I'm going to knacker the oil seal up. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Hmm. That's just if. That's if. This has all been worth it. If I can actually fix that that, that governor, which is that thing there, because at the moment it doesn't do it. It doesn't do anything. At least it's on this side of the engine, so I ain't got to dig through the whole engine to get through it. And it's off. There we have it. There is the, the the governor arm, which I've just undone, and that there obviously is the governor, which I'm guessing with centrifugal force flies out and pushes that little washer up. Oops, you can't see it again. There you go. So it's figuring out now why, why, why it won't work. I'm not under, not really. I don't really know why it's not working right. It's a big piston on it, I didn't realise it was that bigger engine. It's all nice and clean inside. No horrible crap in the bottom of the engine. It's always nice to see. Everything looks nice, the bearings are good. Yes. It's pretty good. Now, just figuring out why that doesn't work. Oh, and the oil seal's pretty good around. Uh, put the oil plugs back in. I've got to top these up now. And uh, stick the plate back on. Hey, we'll see. Hope it works. There we go, I've uh, degreased the engine. It's all nice and clean now. Both sides. Yeah, clean enough. Uh, to grease the thingy out there, which is down there. Brother playing around with the hose pipe. Um, so, yeah, the only thing is now left to do is to put it all back together again. This should be fun. Right, um, yes. Uh, I have fixed the governor in it now. It does work. Give it a couple of test runs to see if the governor works. The throttle is fully open. As you can see, that's closed, that's fully open. Closed, open, closed, open. So, uh, hopefully now it will automatically govern itself at the correct RPM but also this this works now as well so you can set the speed of the engine obviously I'm going to use the adjustment here which adjusts the overall speed of the engine obviously too fast and it'll overvolt the uh, uh, armature sorry it will make too many, too many volts on the armature and make it uh, obviously spin too quickly so what you do is you adjust the screw down here to give it a better, uh, the optimal thing which I'll test We're using a meter when I get it all back together again. I'll test it using a, uh, a voltmeter and uh, get the correct power coming out of it to the uh, you know speed of the engine. <coughs> right, let's get to it. Well, all back together again. It's dark outside. <laughs> anyway, that's not what we're looking at. Let's see if we can get this thing started, shall we? So, I'm running out of fuel, so I've got hardly any fuel in the thing. Let's see if she'll run, shall we? Alright, that sounds pretty good.
that works superbly. The only thing I've got left to do now is to just stick a voltmeter on it and adjust this screw down here to adjust the maximum RPM. So now, uh, when it's running, the more load that gets put on the generator side, because the engine's now got a, uh, a governor on it, that will govern the, uh, the high speed and the tick over, obviously the maximum RPM, um, it will now stop bogging down. On uh, It'll stop overvolting and it'll stop bogging down. Uh, with the um, with ex you know with 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 the heavy load on it, which is what it was doing before, uh, which is why you can't have it as a fixed obviously RPM, you know the throttle just fixed. It's got to have the governor on it. So if, when there's a big load on the engine, it automatically knows to open the throttle a bit more to put more power through, more fuel through to um, you know to uh, compensate for the load that's on it. I think myself that's pretty good. Uh, the little bit more, uh, just just literally turning that screw, uh, sticking a voltmeter on there to get the uh, correct. Uh, well, I could do with sticking a frequency counter on there, so I get 50 hertz out of it. See what's around 50 to 60 hertz, and set it to that. And obviously, the voltage will be th will, will be correct because that's what the speed of the uh, generator should be. Alternatively, you could also use the mathematical way of doing it. You know, uh, the speed the you know how many rotations of the engine is doing to the thingy majingy and oh and I can't do that I'll just do the easy way stick a voltmeter on it <laughs> stick a, a voltmeter and a frequency uh, a frequency counter on it yeah 240 volt frequency sniff a thingy majingy on it which I've, I've actually got in the house but it's a three pin not one of those um can't remember the name of them now the cool ones these not these type oh, it's got water in it oh dear it's not good well it was turned off so on, on, middle and off. It's not tripped any of the things out, so that's all right. Leave it dry out for a bit, and uh, re-oil the uh, bearings in the in the end of it here. Uh, clean the whole thing up, degreased it all. That's why it's all nice and shiny now. Looks good. All nice and shiny instead of oil everywhere. Looks a lot better. Shame that's not very good. I could have probably done with giving it a lick of paint, but to be fair, it's a generator at the end of the day. It's designed to be used. It doesn't really need it. If I can get it working in, uh, perfect, I should probably get about maybe 150 quid for it. Which would be nice, because the insurance on that thing there is £1,400 this year. Last year it was £1,645. So it's gone down by... Uh, <laughs> 200 odd quid, big deal. When you're paying that much out, it doesn't really feel like it, it's much of a difference. Crazy. Second year, uh, this will be my second year of, dr of driving, so I'll have a one year's no claims bonus on my insurance, and it just drops it down by that. Crazy. Anyway, battery's almost flat on my camera, so I'll go and uh, stick this in the shed, let it dry out a bit, and give it a bit of a play with tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video has helped to anybody out there who has the same issues with it, with it, with, it, with a generator that's overvolting. Check the governor. Peace out, guys. Catch you later.